Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are jumping into a panel discussion with some uh, filmmakers who, who contributed some film to the Black Femme Supremacy Film Fest. And uh, this block is particularly with films concerning around nature and environment and, and queerness. Um, and before we begin to, to meet the filmmakers, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Leanne. I go by they, them. I'm going to be moderating the session. I'm originally from the Philippines. I live now in the Bay Area on occupied Ohlone territory. I am an anti-imperialist activist. I'm a feminist and I'm also a, a climate change activist. And so really excited to have all these conversations around all of these topics because a lot of the times we don't think about queerness and nature and, and these intersections. And so with that said, we'll jump into our, our first introduction of our, our filmmaker. And without trying to butcher any of the energy, I'll I'll pass it off to Brandy to, to introduce herself. Hello, Leon. It's so nice to meet you. And I'm truly excited to be here. My name is Brandy Creek. I'm a documentary filmmaker from Baltimore. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the cinematographer, director, producer of um, Children of Paris. So exciting. Thank you so much for joining us, Brandy. And now our second filmmaker that's joining us, Saki, go ahead and, and feel free to introduce yourself. Hey y'all, I'm Saki. I am, I go by she, her. I am an energy worker, artist, and astrologer, and I am the creator of Earth and Energies. I love that. And again, thank you both for joining us. And I'm so excited for, for the audience to be able to watch both of your films. It was really, really powerful and really spoke to so much of, of who I am. And when I was watching it, I just, let's just jump in and find out where did you draw your inspiration from? And, you know, I can kind of see and hear from your introduction of who you are and what you do, but really when you, when you made this film or contributed to it, where did you draw your inspiration from? So we'll start with Brandy. Oh, um, <laughs> so sorry. I um, drew my inspiration from really the first time I saw Chaotic Couture. He's one of the featured performance performance performers in the film. And when I first saw um, them performing on stage, I had never seen. It was like a like a moth to a light. They were just so gorgeous and talented, and I it didn't even dawn on me like the fact that they were performing hip hop or anything. But shortly after, shortly after, it's like one of those things where they're queer performing hip hop and I'm watching this right now. And this is a rarity in the mainstream. So I said to myself, like, why is this person who's clearly amazing talent only performing in this tiny club in Baltimore city? And from there, I really started to question why is the hip hop industry so limited and what they're, the artists that they're introducing and bringing out and backing and bringing you know, to the forefront to entertain the masses. It never dawned on me that black queer men and women were doing hip hop at this level. Thank you for sharing that. I just love also how you introduced it and said you you saw this performer named Chaotic Culture, Couture, and I feel like I'm always drawn to chaotic energy. So <laughs> thank you for putting spotlight onto that. How about you, Saki? What, what, what inspired you for Earth and Energies? Yeah, hmm. Earth and Energies is really inspired by my commitment to refine and evolve within myself. I think it was really like a, a stepping stone uh, slash archive moment of my own phase of integration. Um, I'm a two-spirited being. And so kind of adjusting to being inside of this body, learning to love this body um, has been a process throughout like most of my life thus far. Um, I think I'm in a pretty even spot right now. And, and in that process at that moment that I was making it, Earth and energies really reflected um, my own relationship with my body and then also my deepening relationship with the earth. 
and how the two mirror each other and really like finding beauty in the fact that um, I, as a cis as a cis woman, I'm like holding these eggs inside of my body and I'm um, I'm holding the past and I'm holding the future inside of this body. And similarly, trees are connected to the uh, uh, they connect us to inner earth and they connect us out into the cosmos. And so finding myself in nature and also finding myself as a human being on the earth. So, yeah. That was really, really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing so much of you and, and the journey um, of a, a two-spirit person. I think what you said really resonates with me as a, a gender non-conforming person. And in the sense that I, I feel like I'm trying not to transition into anything, but when I did come to being of who I am, it felt like returning home and it felt like returning into the earth. And so, you know, Brandy, you talk about like the, the lack of visibility of, of queer black uh, performers, especially in hip hop, and then Saki talking about the earth and, and coming into being with it. I just wanna situate us in, in, in 2021, right? We're all in this horrible group project called the pandemic. We never know when it's gonna end. A lot of the team players aren't really picking up their weight in the work and we're seeing we're seeing um, immense disasters, right? With a lot of the fires happening all over the West Coast and all over Europe and so much flooding with this climate crisis. And then we're also seeing so so much like homophobia and transphobia. And even with little Nas X, who is a Black queer performer, getting so much backlash, right? In this current political context that we're in, how does your your films, how do they situate into this narrative? And so I know it's a very big open question. <laughs> it's one of those like, does your film, is your film resisting? Is it shedding light to things? So really leaving it up to y'all how to approach this, this question. And maybe we'll start with Saki first, just so we have some different flows. <laughs> yeah, um, I love this question. I think, I feel Earth and Energies is really reimagining and reframing our worldview. Mm. I think that uh, a lot of, especially like in the West and in, in, in America that's on top of America, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're very like much programmed to kind of situate our minds to be oriented to like the white gaze and to like their understanding and their culture. And for me, um, I think for Earth and Energies, it's really a film that is calling people, like you said, like you mentioned earlier, Leon, calling people home to the fact that yo, we are literally just fucking humans on a on a planet, right? And and a lot of our indigenous worldviews have been disrupted and trampled, labeled woo-woo, labeled fiction, labeled, you know oh, this is an experimental thing when really this is for Earth and Energies, it's it's really how my foremothers interacted with the Earth. And so I think Earth and Energy's part in this bigger scheme of all the beautiful things and not so beautiful things that you mentioned um, is to just call people to kind of reclaim our energy, to reclaim our worldview and our perspectives that have been hijacked, you know, for like the all of imperialism and colonialism, like how we really see the world has been hijacked, right? And so going back into nature, finding ourselves in nature um, and kind of like Xing out, I like to call them like these little computer tabs that have these little like energetic pictures of um, what we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to create, how we're supposed to be inside of our bodies, how we're supposed to orient ourselves to either gender, right? And really finding that for ourselves. Yeah, so, so sharp. Thank you so much for sharing that, Saki. Brandy? No. Oh my God, that was so brilliant, Saki. That's um, exactly what is going on. Like everything that you said was so on point. And as far as Children of the Paris, um, taking that nature and who we used to be, Queerness has been a factor throughout time, you know, and they've always been here. You've always been here. And indigenous people have accepted that. It wasn't until the imperialism came in that it really 
deemed it bad and be, made it a taboo and a, unacceptable. So it's like we couldn't bring who we used to be into hip hop came from this, you know, the Africa Bombadas, the Karas Ones, knowledge of ourselves and who we are. And so because it was stripped from us, that aspect was stripped completely from who we were. So hip hop is, you know, it's storytelling. It's telling who we are. It's what's going on in our urban areas. It's talking about our tragedies and talking about our triumphs. And the people that who, who have been excluded, who have been here the entire time, are um, is the LGBT community. It's not like they cease existing. We just haven't been able to tell that aspect of our story of the black story within what I feel like is a genre created solely by black people. And um, we can't expand on it if we don't tell everybody's story within the community. Little Nas X actually appeared after I started filming the documentary. Mm. And um, the Old Town Road came out. Nobody knew what was going on. It was like, black guys singing country music. And that was, he's like, oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? I'm singing country and I'm gay. And there was a lot more. <laughs> there was a lot, a lot more. And now he's really asking people to really think about what hip hop is, who gets to rap, and why don't I get to rap? And really asking, we have to really ask ourselves, who is the problem here? What is the problem here? As far as um, the earth and everything being set on fire, I think it's a reset. You know, when everything is burned and cleared out, you know, the Native Americans, they did a natural burning all the time. This wouldn't be happening if they would have let the indigenous people keep doing what they were doing that worked. And I think within the hip hop community, Little Nas has shown up set a little fire and said, well, yeah. what are we doing? Maybe a new story needs to happen. Maybe other people within the black community have something to say and we need to start listening. I love that. And, 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 so, and it's so correct. Sometimes the fires need to burn the patriarchy, need to burn the racism, need to burn the path forward, right? And yeah. I just love that you both like really reference a lot of um, giving honor in, in, into indigeneity for indigenous communities, because really they're the first folks here, first folks everywhere, right? And so when we talk about indigenous culture and we talk about how they took care of the earth, how they stewarded it, how they had a relationship with it and how gender wasn't even defined in a binary like that. Really, really appreciate that you both touch on that. And when I was watching um, The Children of Paris, Brandy, I was really like, you know, taking it back because it really threw me back into like my, my feminist theory days in college and, and watching, you know, Paris is burning, you know, coincidentally burning, right? And, and how did that, you know, documentary, what did that burn to clear the path for us? And I really love that the homage that you gave it and, and the cinematography of it and the interviews, it was just so beautiful. And so I guess I, I wanted to ask you both, if you can ask someone in the world, living or dead, to watch your film and to have a conversation with them after, who would it be? And and what kind of conversation are you are you going to be um, looking forward to it, it, with this person? And so Saki looking like she's thinking deep, but <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. So Brandy, you got, okay. I do know. I would like to have a conversation with some of the originators of rap, like KRS One, Rakem, um, African Bombada, all those people who, during that genre, during that period. Um, before it turned into the P. Diddy's and the NWA's. And trust, I'm a huge fan of hip hop. And I think everything is welcome and everything can be said. Like I said, it's our story, be it ugly, be it beautiful. Um, even Queen Latifah. Mm. I would really like for them to express where they thought hip hop was gonna do, what they thought hip hop was gonna do because it was an education in it and how they feel it's what it's turned into 
mm -hmm. really, and what it's become. Because I feel like the um, a lot of the executive have taken a certain aspect of the hood and they've mm -hmm. run with it. And it seems like nobody else, all we're doing is talking about, I believe that NWA covered cooking crack, you know, mm -hmm. on their album, but now we got another hot pot of, mm -hmm. I, I have the recipe, I don't need it. I want to hear somebody else's story. And I think it's extremely racist, which Harris won and uh, African Bambada, I don't think they planned for that when mm -hmm. they started. I think it was very pro-black. And now I feel like a lot of hip hop Though, like I said, it is an aspect of who we are. But if that's the only aspect that we get to hear, if that's the only record that I get to buy, I absolutely love all the new chicks coming up and how they express their sexuality. You yes. know, this is time and place. We're like clapping and shaking and voting. But I would like a Queen Latifah. I would like another Erica Badu. And it seems like they're not signing them. And if they are signing them, it's in these little pockets of the internet where I have to really dig deep for them. I want the mainstream. I want to go to their concerts. I want to buy their McDonald's meals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am really just, I would really like to know how those originators being so pro black and so pro African and so pro indigenous, pro indigenous, I would really like to talk to them on mm. how they feel about queer people being invited, queer people talking, telling their story, as well as other men and women within the communities expressing their stories through this music. Ooh, that would be an amazing all over conversation. Would we love to to see that happen if we could? <laughs> yeah. Rocky, who would who would you invite to watch Earth and Energies and, and what conversation will stem from that? First of all, Brandy, yes. <laughs> I I absolutely love all the people that you named and the direction that you're going in. And I'm here for it. And hopefully this is like the seed that ripples out to them. Um for me at Earth and Energies. I had to think about this. A couple people, a couple things came up in my mind, but really I would love to know what my grandchildren would think of this. And I, I do plan on having them at some point, but I, it, I don't know. I have this obsession with my grandkids. When it comes to my kids, I mean, I don't really think about that part, but like <laughs> I, I fantasize about being a grandma. That might be a little weird, you mean? But I would love to, I would love to know what they think and how they feel of my work and and how i chose to utilize my time at this time mm -hmm. right like if i could be like if i could be like the badass grandma that they're like putting their friends on like nah my nana was like hella niche and like savage with the way that she expressed herself um i would feel like yeah you know i could die now <laughs> <laughs> That's that's amazing. And, and you know, I, I also think about that, like, how are we going to be remembered? Like, are we going to be known as like people who really resisted, who really were, were creative or were doing things for the culture? Or were, would we just be like, um, like forgotten? Right. And so that really brings me back into um, something that you both really do in, in the sense that you, you document a very important cultural, very important intellectual, very important creative moment in our lives. And and sometimes these things won't be recognized until years later or maybe even generations later, right? And so I, I want to step back and, and ask more kind of on the technical side of things. I'm not a filmmaker. I just, I'm an artist through, through poetry. And, and so I know that your medium is very, very much different. And so we'd love to hear about what is the process of of coming to be a filmmaker and, and making these films for you? Like, I know both of it, it sounds like when Brandy, you speak, you're, you're such a hip hop head, you have so much knowledge. And then I know Saki, you're able to interweave so much of your personal journey of, of you know, discovering yourself into these films. But for people that are joining that are like, okay, you know, I came here, I wanted to support my friends and support my girl Nia and, and check out the Black Femme. Um, Supremacy Film Fest, and they're not filmmakers, but now they're like inspired. Can you talk more about the technical aspect of what it is to film and 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 how do you go about doing it? Like, do you 
just set a tripod everywhere. You know, everyone's doing TikTok now, right? So like, I will say that this generation, I'm just like, wow, like I tried TikTok and I was not ready at how rough and coordinated and technical it was. And I was like, well, like, I hope you all, and, and you don't even hope they're, they are basically like filmmakers already, right? <laughs> so I'd love to hear about the, that aspect um, from on your side of work. Saki, you want to start? Uh, okay, so July last year, uh, this this project in particular, I literally did everything but filmed it. My dear friend and like the only um, cinematographer that I feel so comfortable with showing these really vulnerable parts of myself. Like, as you guys know, filmmaking is a team, a team sport. So like there's, there's those productions where you need to have, you know, a, a, everyone that wears their hats on inside the, inside the kitchen to like really get it the way that it could be. Um, for Earth and Energies, because it's such an intimate project, fortunately, I only needed one person and he was also my drone operator. And he's actually like a really good friend of mine. So he understands um, my worldview. And for me, that is number one, because if we're not on the same page of, of where I'm coming from with such a personal project, then how you see me and how you don't see me is going to mm -hmm. translate mm -hmm. on the camera. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Brandon Armstrong. Yeah. Um, he sees me perfectly. We have a very beautiful chemistry. Um, this was actually filmed at uh, ooh, Gunpowder Falls, Gunpowder State, Gunpowder Falls State Park near Baltimore, which is like, yo, I love this place. If you guys are in Maryland, please go visit. It's such a very beautiful place to hike, to like, you know, mm -hmm. get in the water, to put your feet in the ground. Um, and so, yeah, he just like followed me around with like a, a jib and then we did some drone shots and he just like let me do my thing. Yeah. And there's actually there's one shot in the in the film. And this was like uh, the second take, because the first take was like us just mapping out the motion. And then the second take, he's just like following me around. He's pushing in. He's pulling out. We're like dancing pretty much. Mm. And then I, I breathe. And I wonder if you guys could catch it. Um, and a dragonfly just lands on my finger and yes. it's just it's like such the, like the most sweetest moment that we caught like after during the playback. So it was, it was really a pleasure to work with him. And then, um, I moved out to Arizona. <laughs> I kind of like hit a wall with editing, hit a wall with, um, the voiceover that I had written for it. I just knew that the, the visual that I had was so beautiful and powerful that it just really did not match. Um, what I had written previously. And so I'm I'm an energy worker and, and I'm deeply involved inside of community. I love my community. They hold me down. And we were actually doing a um a kundalini intensive that weekend. So we were like doing um energy energy work like twice a day for like two hour sessions. And we were hitting things really, really hard. And we were just like really touching our biological energy. Mm -hmm. and and feeling the life force energy run through us and kind of clearing pictures with um, a lot of other cultures perception of what kundalini is and how having these pictures can kind of um block our own connection to these to our own biological energies and when i say biological i mean sexual i mean you know go to the bathroom like just living breathing things that we do involuntarily we're bringing awareness to them and so um, in between those breaks of that session, I was just writing. I, I was writing and I was writing from a voice that felt like it was an older version of me. I, I like to joke and say it's like me when I was 50, was like guiding my hand, a like mm. guide in my pen, you know what I mean? And um, I, I see elders in the trees. And I was like in between the break and I had my feet outside and I'm like in the ground, I'm just breathing. I'm, I'm grounding, I'm connecting with the earth and I'm, I'm writing like I see elders in the trees. I'm writing like the voiceover that you guys hear. And then that Sunday, so this intensive y'all was from Friday to, to Sunday, that Sunday night, um, one of like some part of me was like, okay, it's time to edit. And mind you, this project had been on ice for like a month or two at this point. And so I go in and I start recording and I'm editing it. And I'm like chopping the music up and I'm, I'm adding different like environmental sounds 
And I'm making choices that were not overtly conscious or intentional. And then when I played it back, I literally was crying because I could, I was, I myself, I, I, I was engaging with the medicine that I created, right? Mm. And, and it was like layers where like my tone shifted and then the music shifted and it was totally not intentional. <laughs> it just happened that way. And so I edited it all in one night. Um, and so I think my process is probably hella unique to me. <laughs> But um, I think in these super personal projects, I find that I'm creating with all these different versions of my of myself. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I think about the fact that we're on one planet with so many other planets, you know, orbiting one star and we can look mm -hmm. up at, at the sky and we can see so many stars. And then, you know, we're on one arm of nine arms of one galaxy of infinite galaxies. And in my mind, I think of it as like clocks within clocks. And so my process reflects my art in the sense that I am creating something that is helping to generate the winds that are moving our planet, that is moving our solar system, that is moving our galaxy. That's like, I'm adding to something. And, and whether that is seen and held and felt now doesn't matter because it'll ripple forever. So long answer, but yeah. <laughs> no, I feel that all the way. It's that life. It's that life force energy. It'd be like that, right? Like things just kind of fall into place when you talk about the dragonfly just landing on you and and editing how things just kind of came together. It's that life force energy, really. And I remember when I uh, watched your your opening scene with like the drone coming in on you in the water. I was like, that water looks so good. Like, where's this at? Like. The state park needs to hire you and make this a promotional video, really, you know. So shout out to Brandon, shout out to the state park, hit up, <laughs> hit up our our, our person Saki. Brandy, speaking of you know, rivers and, and Saki's opening, you know, and looking at your name, Brandy Creek, you know, <laughs> trying to draw connections, right? You know, our mother, our mother earth is always with us and within us and so integrated. How was it for you coming about in, in, in this film and, and especially um... the technical aspects? Well, first, I would like to say, listening to Saki talk, it's one of those things where I love artists. I love how we are. I love our movement. I love everything you had to say about how you moved. And it just is so organic. And it's amazing how you really have to have that study of self if you plan on documenting and going and reaching out to document somebody else. And... Um, just sitting there and I'll get to that in a minute. I'll do the technical very stuff right now. But yes, post is where you really make or break yourself. You can really hurt your feelings in post. And that movement and the way you had to talk to yourself and put it on ice and step away and come back. I had filmed for a full year, the uh, a little bit over a full year. I started following Chaotic around, and then DDM came into the picture, and then Rovo Monty, he came into the picture. And I started, they were smaller parts of the project, and it was basically waiting for them to get shows so that I could go and film it. So it was a lot of, you know, a lot of hurry up and waits. And it's also a lot of knowing when to turn the camera on and knowing when to turn the camera off because you can blow through batteries, you can blow through uh, cards and you wouldn't have captured anything. So it's really having that eye for what you want to capture and going in having a little, it's documentary of course. So knowing little bits of what you want to capture that night is ideal because if you don't know, you'll just be frantic filming anything that you can film. So it's like a big thing was I wanted to catch uh, the hit that year that Chaotic had made several times. So, so I was thinking about intercutting later. So we bring, we come to post and all that flew out the window mm. because I sat down and I actually had too much, even though I, you know, did, <laughs> I categorized it correctly. It was in, everything was in the right place. And I was like, there's too much story here. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say because the stories they told me, just so many things about queerness and gayness and the community 
and everything that they go through on like um, a daily basis. Mm. And one big thing, and I'm gonna explore this later, but one big thing that came out to me is within the commu queer community, body acceptance is a huge, huge across the board issue. Um, and I had no idea because, you know, from the outside, as a cis, it's like cisgender, you're looking in and it looks like rainbows and kumbayas and everybody's like, woo, pride. And it, it didn't, I didn't know that that was such a deep issue. Um, and DDM and Chaotic are um, thicker girls. Mm -hmm. And they just expounded on that. So that's a whole nother thing. But it was like those stories which story do I tell? And I had to go back to my original storyboard. And remember, this is about hip hop. I can explore those other stories later, but this is about hip hop. So I funneled, funneled, funneled. And at first it was gonna be a feature, but everybody was like, no, 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 no. All my mentors were like, no, 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 cut, 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 cut. And it was just cutting all those beautiful words out. And it was so hard because they have so, many amazing things to say that I feel like everybody needs to know about. And they're like, you can do something later. You can do something later. So that was really hard. Mm. So funnel, funnel, funnel. And I got all the hip hop stuff together and still had to funnel, 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 funnel that. And it was just like, I gotta cut, I gotta cut. And it was just like, it was really getting in there and cutting and then coming to the acceptance that this was it. Mm. Locking the picture was so hard because it was like, no, he said this, they said that. It was just like, I wanted to put more in, but then I had to take more out, more and more out. So it was one of those things where <laughs> you come to a place of forgiveness. This is it, lock picture, you know, and I got everybody. I don't really work with anybody uh, filming. I had one other camera person a couple times, but it's one of those things where the conversation is so intimate, where it is, it's best to just have mano a mano just talking and I feed you and I fill you full of coffee and we just lay back and you tell me all your secrets. <laughs> but um, in post, definitely, your team is where you make it bringing just different people in who were very excited and also let me know how important the documentary was. Cause I, you know, you go through this as an artist, you're like, no, this is horrible. Nobody wants to know. And they're like, no, this is important. This is important. Tell this story, get this story out there. And so that was really, just really the technical aspect of bringing that team together to do the sound. And when a concert film, sound is extremely important. Um, I still feel like I'm like, you know, you're, I'm still not really happy with some of it, but I'm still like, yes, that's it. Get it out there. We need to show this now. And it's so crazy how the universe worked and everything that's being presented in the media that, and COVID hit and that was another thing. So I had to sit on it a little while longer, but it came out at the right time. And <laughs> sorry, I am a single practitioner. I asked the moon for everything. Mm -hmm. And really, so it was one of those last things when I was locking, um, I went to my girl, my guy, the moon is a bay. And <laughs> I was <laughs> like, help a sister out. I'm here, I'm humble. And I always in everything for the greater good. Mm -hmm. So that's how I know that that's why the universe is giving me this big push and I'm in black femme supremacy and getting into uh, things because it's like the moon is like, it's time. It's time to talk mm. about this. It's the universe is like, this is time. This is a huge movement of knowledge. And we're back in that place where people really have to learn that, you know, humanness is here and we have to start humanness and loving mm. All that good gushy stuff I love. All right, all right. Yes. Okay. Answer was long too. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 important. I'm just I'm just now trying to capture, really the beauty of what both of you said. There's so many gems in in all of that. 
that you know monologue you all just shared i'm like wow i don't i'm like this is such a hard job being a moderator but you know brandy talk about the universe and saki talk about the like life force energy and and really it compelling you all to to be into this intimate relationship with with your art really and um even amidst like the technicalities of of editing and the gruesomeness of it <laughs> it's grueling right but that because you love it so much and because this is maybe what you're called to do it, it's one of those like you know like i'll go with it you know we'll struggle through this and so i just think about um how editing is so important in in a lot of our art forms right and brandy i will say i'm so happy to hear you talk about how um you you heard a lot about like the body dysmorphia and in, in the community and uh, and and being a fat uh, being a fat like queer person myself like I actually watched your film wanting and yearning to hear more about that because I saw it you know you like you see which bodies are are deemed acceptable and which bodies are not which bodies are going to be hidden and so I love that when you talked about your editing you're saying you know like I'm trying to get this message out there but there's going to be, I'm going to parking lot these other ideas. And as a, as like an audience watching it, I felt it, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I would love if this gets covered or like, is this going to be talked about? And so I just want to say that like that, even that, like that thought process, I don't even know what to call it, was definitely like felt as like an edit slash possibility. And so thank you so much for, for, for shedding light into that. And yeah, I I'm just I'm just so amazed. I, I really love this. Um, I know it's like Saturday for all of us here, like you know, and and really couldn't ask anything more. And I guess one kind of final kind of concluding, if if not um, discussion question, is what are three words that you would want the audience to feel after watching your film? You know, I, I'm pretty sure that like you as a filmmaker will come in saying like, oh, I want this and this, but sometimes you'll watch it and it, it's it's something else for everyone. And so I don't know if this question is fair, but thinking about what three words or feelings you would want someone who watched this film, anyone to come out of it feeling. So anyone ready looking? <laughs> Saki, you want to start? Uh, oh. Um. When people watch Earth and Energies, I would prefer them to be inspired to stillness. Uh, and if I were to put that into words, I would say, go to Earth. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, Brandy? Oh my God, I love this girl so much. <laughs> um. My words that I would have to say is in the hip hop and the rap community is I want anybody who aspires to say, I can rap, I can hip hop. You know, it's time to open it up to anybody who wants to do it and not just have it be um, a male dominated uh, genre of music, especially since it's such a huge element of amazing, authentic storytelling. I want them to leave and say, I can hip hop, I can rap. Thank you so much, Brandy. Thank you so much, Saki. Thank you to the audience for, for joining us as we talk about um, these two films that we're gonna be showing at the Black Femme Supremacy Film Fest, really encouraging you all to, to get tickets and, and to attend and, and see these films. They're, they're really, really powerful. And really, sometimes we don't think about the, the interconnectedness about queerness and, and environment. And, and really there's so much. And one, for example, is because of colonization and because of imperialism, a lot of our relationships to the earth and to our queerness and to bodies that are different and diverse has been wiped out or has been damaged. And so let these films help guide you to healing, help let these films help you bring yourself back to the earth and back to 
the bodies that we should be celebrating. Again, follow us on social media at Black Femme Supremacy Film Festival. Our website is at bfsfilmfest.com. And the festival will be running from September 5th to 11th. And thank you so much for joining. And I'll let the, um, our speakers say, um, how can we keep in touch with you all? And, and, and if you have any last closing words, any last, you know, hot takes that you want to share with the audience before, before we wrap up. Brandy, we'll start with you. I will go. Um, you can follow me at, on Instagram at childrenofparis.com. No, Children of Paris. And there's also childrenofparis.com where you can find info, tickets, for the different uh, festivals, for the Black Femme Supremacy Festival. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, mm -hmm. And just different uh, things about the artists, Kayana Couture, DDM, Robo Monty, links to the SoundClouds and all their merch. So please give us a follow, please check us out. Great, any hot take? Any hot take concluding remark? Um. <laughs> I will say this. My big hot take is pass the mic. Keep this yes. discussion going. Keep, keep it on. And start asking. Start demanding a new Queen Latifah, a new Erica Badu. Start. Because my whole thing is that when I get ready to go out, I listen to Chaotic Couture. But then they also have when you're chilling, cleaning your house with a glass of red wine. Robo has a new hit coming out. It's, it's hush hush, I can't talk about it, but please look out for that. I want the conversation, pass that mic, keep the conversation going because it's, it's time for hip hop to grow. It's time for that musical genre. We've been stuck, but it's time for us to grow and become more inclusive and everything fabulous that yeah. all, us black and brown people are it, it we need to we need to start sharing each other's songs through the words of hip hop love that what an amazing hot take saki okay. how can we keep in touch with you and last hot takes for for our our little session yeah uh follow me on social media twitter is at softer saturn uh instagram is celestial.yenergy um, Celestial with an S, uh, Energy with a Y, and then Enter and then GY. Hopefully that was clear. Uh, also, you can uh, engage with my art on my website at CelestialDrip.com. That's going to be S-E-L-E-S-T-I-A-L, Drip.com. And then you can engage with like all my films. You could book a session with me. Uh, you can read my blog post. I really talk a lot. And I'll also have like a, I have a upcoming NFT project coming out um, that I'm super excited about. So stay tuned for that. Um, final hot takes. I would say our worldview is our responsibility. And so as it, as it may seem that we're inside of an apocalypse cycle, uh, <laughs> it's also a liberation timeline. Uh, and so, you know, reclaim your sovereignty, reclaim your worldview, reclaim your perspective do that inner work and just remember that you are the question and you are the answer. Thank you guys. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the medicine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deep appreciation again, Brandy and Saki for, for all of that. Um, again, follow us on social media, Black Femme Supremacy Film Fest, our website, bfsfilmfest.com. And we'll see you at the film festival from September 5th to the 11th. Bye everyone.